Right, so the final exercise for today, the final screencast, is on the subject of branding. Now, branding is not only critical to you and your business, whatever you do as a web designer, but just like understanding sales and understanding the fundamentals of business, it's also going to be really, really useful for your customers as well, because you will be advising them on branding. Websites are very much about branding. Okay, so what is branding? Well, fundamentally, your brand is what do you mean? If I say to you Apple, then immediately there is a concept in your mind about what Apple stands for, what Apple means. If I say Coca-Cola, if I say Enron, if I say the United States, all of these things have a brand. Now, a brand can be created consciously or it can be created unconsciously and creating a brand consciously is better that means that you decide this is what I choose to be this is what I just have decided I want to mean to people and then you express that essence that being through absolutely everything that you do so fundamentally your brand is what you are when you think Apple, you think Apple is something. Also, the branding is what you are not. So Apple is this. Apple is not Microsoft. Apple is not Logitech. So branding is distinguishing what you are from what you are not. So what distinguishes Apple from Microsoft? What distinguishes Apple from any other hardware provider or software provider out there. When you think about any brand, say Apple, they make stuff, they have various products, and when you think about that, you think in terms of the world of MP3 players, the world of phones, the world of computer software, the world of computers, and within that world, Apple has a position. So your brand is, is very often what distinguishes you from others within a particular space. Now for you this is going to be really important because when different customers think about web design or web designers, you need to position yourself relative to their experience of web designers. What do they think about web design now? What does the world think about web design? And what do you choose to mean within the context of all of that stuff, all of that web design. And distinction is what it's all about. Distinction is saying, this is what is different about me compared to everything else. You've got to be distinctive. You've got to have some kind of essence or properties that make you different, that make you somehow stand out. And let's say a customer's got hundred web designers in that particular area that they could choose from right and all of those web designers are standing in the line together they're all looking the same they're all saying the same things they're all dressed the same they've all got the same pricing it's all the same then what are your chances of getting picked out of that group of a hundred it's going to be one in a hundred now if you stand apart from that group then a customer has got a reason to notice you first of all and then their question is going to be okay well what's different about this one than the rest. Nature has developed the idea of a herd. Prey animals group together in a herd and the purpose of a herd in nature is so that individuals are not noticed. When you've got a flock of birds, when you've got a shoal of fish, when you've got a herd of sheep and a predator comes along, the herd is there for the protection of all the individuals. So when a wolf wants to attack a herd of sheep then the herd moves together which means that it's very hard to pick out one particular sheep if all the sheep are spread out then a wolf can pick out a sheep and go and uh, attack that particular sheep now for sheep that's great when you don't want to be noticed herds are brilliant in terms of branding business marketing you don't want to be in a herd 
So if the, all the herd is moving in one particular direction, you need to be apart from that herd. You need to stand apart from the group. You need to be distinguished and you need to be noticed. So the big question in all of this is, okay, how are you going to be distinguished? What's, going to, what's distinctive about you? What's different about you? And the answer to that, you know, like so many things in business, they're obvious, simple questions. I would start by asking, what makes you special? And we've got an exercise to do with that. This is going to be our first assignment. Each day we're going to have one assignment. And we're going to start to look at positioning. We're going to talk an awful lot more about positioning over the, the rest of the course. So day one assignment is to think about your position. And I've got a few questions to use as a guideline. Now, I don't want you to write this stuff down and send it to me. This is for you. All the assignments are for you. You're not going to be marked on them. That's, there's no right or wrong. I want you to do this for yourself because it's your business. Okay. So the first question, and I, you know, please, please do write this down because the act of writing stuff down helps to make it real in your mind. I've written hundreds of tutorials and articles. I've written two books, and my own personal understanding of web design would not have been able to grow in the way that it has if I hadn't written this stuff down. The act of writing, the act of getting your thoughts down in hard copy helps you to solidify those thoughts and that gives you a solid base from which you can progress and move on. If you don't write it down then the thoughts are just going to be floating around your brain and you'll tend to rotate round and, and keep thinking the same things. So question number one, please write this down. Take a few minutes and think about it. Number one, what are you good at? And I don't just mean in terms of technical skills, um, making web pages, graphic design, business, whatever. Although those things are important, so do write them down. But generally, what are you good at as a person? Are you a, an organized thinker? Are you a creative person? Are you good with people? Are you a good planner? So think about all of those properties that could in any way be applied to your business in web design. What are you particularly good at? And the reason I'm asking this question is it's a lot easier to use the things that you are good at to your advantage. Yeah. We're all good at certain things and we're all weaker at certain things. Now we can work on our weaknesses, but if you're going to go out and pitch your services to the world as a web designer, sell your strengths. There's no point going out to try and be something that you're no good at yet. Yeah, We're all good at stuff. Every, every human being on this planet is special. So we're just trying to say, what, what is it that's special about you? So the starting point is, what are you good at? The other thing is, what are you passionate about? What do you love doing? What turns you on? What gets you out of bed in the morning? It could be um, that you just love helping people. It could be that you're passionate about the environment. It could be that you're passionate about graphic design. It could be that you're passionate about music. There's things that we are all passionate about. You might be passionate about people in the third world. You might be passionate about religion. You might be passionate about the human spirit. Whatever it is that you're passionate about, write it down. Because when you base your business and when you base your brand about something that you've got a passion for, that passion is going to come through. See, when you've got a brand, whether it's conscious or unconscious, it comes through everything that you do. Now, if you've never thought, what am I going to be to the world? Then what's going to come through is just naturally who you are. And it'll be a lot of mixed messages because we're complex people. But if you say, look, this is who I am, this is how I choose to be for the world, and especially in the world of business and the world of web design, then that's what's going to come through. And when you decide to align what you do, what you are, with your own passion, then people will get your passion. And when people get your passion, they will be able to connect with you. And it's all about connection. Fundamentally, we all buy based on emotional impulses. Our heart chooses to buy and then our brain has the job of rubber stamping the decision. We think that we make buying decisions completely logically. It's not true. 
We make buying decisions because it's our emotions that drive us. It's our desire to be safe. It's our, our desire to be right. It's our desire to look good. It's very often it's excitement. What does this make possible in my life? And your passion will connect with people emotionally in a way that all your reasons and your features and your credentials, all, the, all these things cannot do to such a powerful way. So, you know, you will know that I'm passionate about sharing what I know about web design in order to help other people to succeed and in, enjoy a happy life. And I love the web and I love it when websites work and I hate it when they don't. And that's what that's what people connect with. What are you knowledgeable about? And again, we're not just talking about domain knowledge, you know, particular skills, what have you learned, HTML, all that kind of stuff. Although that, that knowledge, again, is important. But what else are you knowledgeable about? If you know loads about classical music, or you know loads about camping, or you know loads about childcare, or you know loads about the environment or um, nutrition, whatever you know about, there's an opportunity there. Because it's a huge world, right? And there are millions of people out there who need websites doing. And if you've got one particular area where you've got a passion and where you've got knowledge, then you can find a niche in that world. You can find a point that where you can be really sharp, where you can get through, you can cut through the noise. You can really make a difference and be noticed by people. The last question is, what communities do you have access to? Again, it's really, really obvious. But if you're already part of a particular community, say you may be part of a, an education community, you may know a lot of parents of children in schools, you may be part of a faith community. Whatever community you're part of, consider that there may be big opportunities for you to be the web designer for that community. It makes a lot of sense.